I don't really know how to do this, how to have this conversation. So I'm just going to share something that a member of my synagogue shared with me in the hopes that it might affect us, that we might actually learn from it, that it might affect me, that I might learn from it as well. Uh, I am not entirely sure how to frame the conversation except to say that I'm going to do my best uh, imperfectly to articulate what someone else shared with me. It happened in my synagogue uh, this last Shabbat. And I know it's not the first time because I've heard about it before. We are a community, a diverse kind of community. We take pride in that. It is part of a Berkeley banner that we wave, but it is not necessarily true through and through that we have a diversity that we know how to be. Uh, because who's the we doing the embracing? Who is the we that's being embraced? And once you draw those lines, who does the outreach and who's being outreached to, uh, you suddenly have an in and out dynamic, an inside outside, that the word diversity and inclusion and equality, those words become slogans and not realities for people who would walk into a shul or people who belong to a shul. And so here I am, a white man, a white straight man in a synagogue, never worrying if I belong, never being asked questions like a member of my shul was asked this last Shabbat. And as I know, members have been asked in the past, old and young. This is the question. Someone came up to a member of my shul and said, do you belong to the catering staff? Are you part of the catering staff? I really loved the way the room was set up. And no, she isn't on the catering staff. She's not responsible for the room being set up. She's a member of the shul who comes every Shabbat just to daven. And even if she weren't a member of the shul, who, uh, who is part of our regular Shabbat crowd, what if she just visited? Would you think it correct to assume that someone who walks into a shul is part of the catering staff, and I have to, of course, add the dimension that was true in this case, would you ask someone if they were on the catering staff because they showed up in shul and they were black? And that just happened this last Shabbat. It's not the first time that it's happened at Netivot Shalom here in Berkeley. And here in Berkeley, where we are incredibly proud of the kind of progressive values that we believe define us, but we know on the street, we know through real estate, we know that gentrification is a deep problem in Berkeley, we know that white privilege is true. There is a truth to it in the history and the fabric of America, and no shul, no community, no person is immune from its effects. And so we were celebrating our diversity. We were so proud to be a place where we believe everyone can belong. Our mission statement says very clearly, Nativo Shalom invites you to engage in a cross-generational discovery of Jewish inspiration and purpose. But do we really? Who is Nativo Shalom and who are we inviting? We're inviting you. Well, I'm white. Does that mean white people are inviting other white people? Does it mean when I look out and I see in our community a few members who aren't white? Do I think differently about outreach and inclusion? Do I pat myself on the back for having different colors of members? Do I even know how to talk about this? And the answer is no, I don't. But what I can do is listen really well so that when a member of my shul tells me that because she was black, she was asked if she was on the catering staff, I can do my part and amplify her question to you. So whoever you are, and I'm asking myself the question, in a very deep way. I am disturbed that this happened. Would I have made the same assumption even if I didn't ask the question? Do I pat myself on the back because we have a few members who are black or Latino? Do I think it is extraordinary to have these aspirational values? Do we actually mean to invite ourselves and everyone else to the table? Yes, of course. Can I ignore that this actually happened this last Shabbat? Can I ignore that it happened a few years ago to a young member of the shul who was a baby here and was asked on Yom Kippur, why didn't you set up the chairs in the other room? As if it was his job and not his shul. We have a long way to go before we can claim any of the values that we believe in, we, before we can claim that we have achieved any of them. It's in these seven days towards election season that I think uh, we need to continue paying attention because the fabric of society in a caricature kind of way is certainly frayed. We have many, many issues on the table.
the racial divide is actually being exacerbated by this election campaign, of course. But it is not out there. It is in here. It is in me. I'm not sure who you are, because I can't see you, but it might be in you. Can you hear the question that the person asked me as one that touches your own sense of judgment and self? Can you do more than feel compassion for that person? Can you feel a responsibility for the privilege that might be yours is certainly mine even when I'm unconscious of it? Because until we can hear that question in advance, know that there is an implicit bias that absolutely pervades our world, our reality, our shuls. I'm speaking as one white person who never would have thought of that question, but might have had it in the back of my mind against my sense of self against my better judgment, who I wish I were in the world and what I wish was our community. But it is true that someone just this last Shabbat was asked a question that I never would be asked, not only because I'm a man, but because I'm white. Someone was asked, are you on the catering staff? I love the way the room is set up. Now, I'm glad they liked the way the room was set up. But they were speaking to another person without knowing who they were, except that they were black. Shuls are places that need to continue paying attention to what we aren't yet. White privilege is a conversation that shuls and people are so uncomfortable having, including me. How do I have it? I'm going to watch this video when I'm done, in just a moment. I have no idea if I got it right. But what I've done a few times intentionally, what I'm going to do one more time, is ask the question that was asked of the member of the shul. Put it out there again. Be uncomfortable saying it disturbed that it happened, and to accept responsibility for being part of an environment where it happened. I'm committing myself to listening really well. How can I not be part of the problem? How can I help make it better? The question was, a member of my shul, or any human being, was asked because they were black. I love the way this room is set up. Are you part of the catering staff? We can do better than that. We're going to do better than that if we choose to.